All right, I'll, I'm making it live right now, and it's just the pic. It's just the graphic, so people can have time to get on while you're while you're still working here. Um, well, I can be home at three at three 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 o'clock. Okay. Hey, welcome to this video. I appreciate you being with me. Complete in thee, no work of mine could 
take, dear Lord, the place of thine. Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me, and I am now complete in thee. Yea, justified, O blessed thought, and sanctified salvation wrought. Thy blood hath pardoned, bought for me, and glorified I too shall be. Complete in thee, each one supply, and no good thing to me denied, since thou my portion, Lord, wilt be. Right, everybody good afternoon I'm running late but uh, I'm still here amen so that's good I hope you're all doing well hope you can hear me okay I I'm assuming you can oh, if I need this closer I probably don't do I I don't know looks good we'll see here I'm always loud enough right Luke usually most of the time well how much have I missed nothing yet I just got started I just said hello. That's all I did. Boy, do I have some interesting things for you. Someone sent me this video, and I'll get into that. Anyway, I hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, I'll show you this. Uh, let's see. I think it's that one right there. There we go. I'll give you something to look at right here. I'm telling you. I'll give you something to look at. Um, we're going to talk about Doug Berry here in a few minutes. Oh, boy. Uh, anyway, hope you had a good weekend. We got we, we were able to go out and preach. Uh, well, actually, we didn't preach on uh, Saturday. We actually tracted the event. It was a, a parade, and it, it really worked out better just to track it. Now, this week, we're going to go. This week, we're going to uh, track it and preach the event. But we ended up getting out over 1,100 tracks out there. So that was a blessing to be able to get those out. And, and reach some people out there for the Lord and get them the gospel, which they need. And uh, that, you know, they can take those home and and uh, read those. Amen. Boy, 
Uh, so we we had a we had a good weekend there and had a busy week yesterday, uh, a busy Sunday yesterday. I preached and teached and taught and all kinds of stuff uh, a lot yesterday. Let's see. We did yesterday. We did Baptist history again, the second installment of that, just dealing mostly with the the issues of of uh, the distinctives and how to understand that. Then I, I preached a message on continuing on in a series on keeping the kids from a book that David Cloud had, had wrote with a number of pastors just and, and full-time Christian workers and saved Christians that have raised their children in churches for years, and, and they've been married for a long time and all that good stuff. So... We did that, and I preached on that, and that was very convicting. And then I preached my morning message on God redeeming our life from destruction and continuing in preaching down through that series in dealing with um, Chris, the Christian's benefit package. So I hope you're listening to those as they go online. Uh, we had a, a bunch of stuff we hit on Sermon Audio here in the last couple days. So there's a bunch of new stuff there. Marks of a New Testament church, angels as stars and fire, angelology, uh, lots of good stuff there. I got some, I want to down, download a broadcast we did on Friday. I'll download it there. But anyway, hopefully Luke will get some videos, some more videos on YouTube here too. So we'll get some more of those. Hope you're all doing well out there. Hope you all had a good week and I hope you were, were able to go to church. Yesterday, listened to the Word of God preach and uh, preached, and uh, that you were able to fellowship with the saints. I hope you did not run into any of those no-eyed laws people. I hope you stayed clear of the no-eyed laws. I have van seats made out of no-eyed. Anyway, I'm getting Carl Winters a t-shirt that says, Have you heard of the new I'd laws? He's going to have a t-shirt with that. Amen, Stephen. I was here late, too. We didn't leave till 9 o'clock also. Praise the Lord for that. People spamming with no eyed laws. All kinds of stuff. Anyway. Boy, what a crazy time. Uh, I Someone sent me this video. I don't know who sent it to me. Because <clears throat> it disappeared on my messenger and I couldn't find it for some reason. But I remembered what it looked like. So I searched YouTube for it and I found it. I found it. I found this video, which I thought was absolutely crazy. Now, I want you to understand something about this guy right here. Now I think this guy's possessed. And this guy, as ignorant as he is, is absolutely working for the devil. Because what you're going to hear this guy say in this video, you're going to be like, this is insane. This is bonkers insane. I suppose some of you, or most of you, have already heard of Kobe Bryant has died, along with seven other people, I think it was, eight other people. They had a helicopter accident, and uh, and he died, and a bunch of other people died with him on that helicopter. Very sad to see that happen. 
Um, sounds like to me the weather was bad. They tried to they downed a bunch of them, but they thought they could get through it. So they they went ahead and went through the the bad weather. And I just I I want to go on the record and say that I put the section of Illuminati blood sacrifice exposed in the same category as the new eyed laws and the flat earth. All three of those things are one thousand percent one thousand percent. Labeled in the creepy dude basement, staying up all night, watching YouTube videos, eating cheese. All right, I'm sorry, that's what that is. That's not, that's not, come on. No, I, I really hope nobody believes in. Mario the Vigilant Christian's blood Illuminati blood sacrifice exposed. I hope <laughs> I hope <laughs> if you have that you are guilty of watching too many YouTube videos. <laughs> Uh, look, I am a truther. I absolutely believe in the things that I can prove with the scriptures. Not just absolutely far-fetched videos to get 300,000 views on to make money on YouTube. I mean, it's just, I don't believe that stuff. It's just goofy. Yeah, pray for Maritis' mom. Her name is Maria, and she's in the hospital. She's very sick. Uh, be in prayer for her at this time as well. Make sure that we don't forget that. Yeah, I just... I, I don't believe in the Illuminati blood sacrifice exposed uh, videos. <laughs> Honestly, I have to tell you, okay, I probably have never watched any of those. I've just made fun of the titles. But if I follow the normal train of YouTube videos, I have to say, I would have to say that it's probably, in the words of our illustrious president of the United States, it's fake news. It's all fake news. China. China. China and fake news. Okay. That's what I think about that. I think it's about as fake as the vigilant Christian dancing to the dance of David on that video I seen one time. And he started dancing and he was like, I'm doing a dance for, I'm doing the dance of David to make a joyful noise. And he started, he literally started dancing on that video. And I was like, and I feel sorry for that kid. I hope he gets saved someday. I really do. Anyway, but um, it's just uh, it just it's crazy stuff. I'm sorry. It's just what it is. Uh, but I've watched the rise and fall of many of these YouTube stars, and I've watched them rise and fall like that and they're gone some of them took my videos and got like hundreds of thousands of hits on my videos <laughs> they made a ton of money on my videos man and mine are free <laughs> oh anyway all right that's another story so <sighs> So, three things that we will not talk about today. Number one, we will not talk about the new eyed laws. Number two, we will not talk about the flat earth.
Number three. We will not talk about Illuminati. Blood sacrifice. Exposed. Okay. I have no idea, Stephen, what he got caught doing. I'm not trying to bash that dude at all, so I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I hope not. I have no idea. I'm not into internet gossip either, but... Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Are you ready? We're going to talk about Doug Barry here. Jenna Barbie Jones. Is that a real name, Jenna? Anyway. It is Monday. I should get started since I'm a little bit late. Fashionably late, I might add. Right, Luke? Fashionably. Because if you're going to be late, it must be fashionably late. It absolutely must be. Did I get trolled? Is somebody trolling me? I don't know. That's really gross. I don't want to know that. Striking all the weird comments from the record. Seeing how I, I do not want to know anything about weird people that are doing very scary things. Anyway. Well, here, you know, we talked about the rosary a little bit, and we'll probably look at this a little bit again. It, the thing is, is it's really... There's that. Does it not shock you that there's actually people out here like this? I can't keep my real identity secret. I just want you all to know, by the way, before we get started with this video, that I'm going to grow my beard out until May 1st. So, I have, oh, let's see, we're coming up on February. Let's see what, February, March, April, May. So, what is that, like four months, three months, Luke? What is that? Three months? Three months. So, your, your real name is not Big Whale? Are you kidding me? Well, now, I can't promise you that strong spiritual warfare will not make a, a, comeback. a comeback here. And there's a reason for that. Because I have to show the absolute foolishness and nonsense of what Roman, the Roman Catholic papacy is actually teaching. And I, I think that – I wonder if the guy that – I don't see it. I wonder if he took it down. He probably took it down because he sees me use it all the time. Because I think the guy that made it might not like me. I don't know. It's a bummer. I like – that's my favorite video. People used to make fun of you and now you love it. I don't think it worked out the way that he wanted it to. I, I think he didn't want me to like it. I think he wanted me to hate that video. All right, somebody needs to make the new video. Because now I can't find it. That's so not fair. It seems gone. All right, somebody text it to me. Or somebody message it to me if you have the video on strong spiritual warfare. Because it's not right, man. That video made me famous. 
Uh, let's see. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Now, this is going to get weird. When I heard it, I'm going to stop it like a bunch of times. My beard is huge now, says Carl. Hold on. Let's get let's look at this here. Just as long as it looks good, Carl, and you don't look like some rock star. All right, here we go. You ready? Me, I'm Doug Berry. You know, in a recent interview that my friend Father Heilman and I did for the U.S. Grace Force podcast. <laughs> okay. Proof that grace does not mean the same thing to Roman Catholics as it does to born-again believers. Just, just note that. Secondly, note the statue in the back. Note the crucifix in the back. The shield's covered up over here, but we'll see that. Here we go. Link right up here and in the description below with Father Chad Ripiker, an exorcist. We heard Father Ripiker say these words. Does anybody think the exorcists always look like they have more demons than the people they're casting demons out of? Because I do. I always think they have more demons. They look like they have more demons. Anyway, I'm just kidding. I don't always think that. Probably haven't noticed that. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there for fun. Mary, the Blessed Mother, has perfect coercive power over the demons. Whoa. Does anybody know? Does anybody know in the Bible where it says that Mary has perfect coercive power over the demons? Is there a verse that says that anywhere in the scriptures or that alludes to that fact? Incredible. God gives this to Mary. Perfect coercive power over the demons. Okay, look at this picture here. This is supposed to be Mary, and this is a devil, and the devil is, like, scared of Mary. Okay. Now, I want you... Okay. Before we get started with this, we continue with this, I mean, I want you to I want you to think about something here. I want you to think very strongly about this. In this video, you're going to hear some things that are attributed to Jesus Christ alone in the Bible, but this man slips in Mary in place of Jesus. And every time he does it, I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to show you where he does it. Okay. You got problems, spiritual problems. We all do temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil. We all get them every day in one way, shape or form. Sometimes they're really ramped up. Sometimes they're more intense, right? We know this. Uh, a lot of this depends upon the life that we're living, the choices that we're making, but sometimes things are hitting us left and right. Turn to Mary. Whoa. Did anybody else hear that? I mean, let's back that up again. You got problems? Turn to Mary. You got troubles? Turn to Mary. Where does it say that in the scriptures? See, they. this is the difference... Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church does not use the Bible as their sole authority for faith and practice. It does not, the, the Catholics don't use the Bible as their sole authority for faith and practice. So then... What we have is, we have a different teaching here. That word mediator is seven times in the Bible. 
Is it ever mentioned once? Is it ever mentioned once as being Mary? Let's look. Because what he is doing is he's describing a meteor, mediatory ship, uh, a mediatory position to Mary. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. All right, there you go. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Look at this verse. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. Mary. Nope, doesn't say that. No, what does it say? For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. There is only one mediator. The Bible says it right here. There is no co-redeemer. Yeah. Let's look at that, too. We're, we're going to look at that today, too. We're going to cover, yeah, maybe I should be calling this Mariology, right? Let's see. Maybe I should change my title. Maybe I should change my title. Wait a minute. Lisa, are you saying Mary wasn't a white woman? Every picture you see of Mary, she's a white woman. <laughs> Every statue, she's like a she's like a white lady. She's a white lady from the Midwest. <laughs> For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. There is no woman that was ever given the right to be the mediator. And for this cause, he is, by, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. And to Jesus, the mediator of the New Covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Seven times that word mediator never refers to Mary. So he's telling you, turn to Mary. Turn to Mary. That we're living, the choices that we're making. But sometimes things are hitting us left and right. Turn to Mary. Turn to Mary. Turn your eyes upon Mary. Look full in her wonderful face. Is that not what they're saying? So basically, why sing turn your eyes unto, upon Jesus? But turn your eyes upon Mary. I mean, how do you even say that in, with any honesty at all? You have to say that if you've never read the Bible or you are a complete devil-possessed, lying, false prophet. Mary constantly throughout the day and there's so many powerful ways to do it one of the most powerful ways that heaven has made wait okay so notice before we get there he goes turn to Mary all throughout the day the Bible says to pray without ceasing the Bible says to 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 pray to God to have our affection set on things above
Now he's about to tell you that that heaven has revealed something. He's about to tell you that heaven has revealed something. That's what he's about to do. He's Listen to this. Perfectly clear to us is the rosary. To pray the rosary. To pray this rosary every day. Our Blessed Mother does not abandon us, especially when we turn to her through the rosary also to consecrate so the blessed mother does not does not forsake you if you pray the rosary see if they got to just here, Father Cashmore will show you how to pray the rosary. Hello, my My name is Father Matthew, and today I am going to teach you, very, very simply, how to pray the rosary. Now, the rosary has a very long history across centuries of Christian worship, and every denomination of Christianity has its own ways of praying the rosary. It is, at its most basic, simply a way of counting prayers. And over the centuries, this has ranged from counting the roses that, were, that adorned the Christians that were put into the Colosseum, through to ropes with knots in it, and perhaps something that looks like this, which is really what we think of when we say the words rosary. Now, the version of the rosary I'm going to teach you today is the most common in the Western Church. You'll recognize it immediately from very, very simple rosaries like this wooden one to something more elaborate with machined metal or glass or precious stones. But it doesn't matter what the rosary looks like. What matters is praying it. What matters is finding a rhythm to your prayer life that allows you to step above the bustle and the noise and the chaos of everyday life and to connect to God. And so in this short video, I will teach you how to pray what we call the Marian Rosary. And so let's start with the structure of the Rosary. Once you understand how the Rosary is constructed, how it's made, then you will understand how the prayers work. And every Rosary is made in the same way. You start and end the Rosary with Christ, with the crucifix or with a cross. This is where you begin and this is where you end. Then you have the first section of beads. There are five beads in total, two that sit on their own, and three beads in the middle. You then move along the rope, and what you will find is these groupings of 10 beads. Now these groupings, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, are called decades. And it's on these decades that we pray the Hail Mary. Before each decade, we say the Our Father, and we end each decade with a glory be. Then, on the beads that sit on their own, we pray what are called the mysteries. Now, there are lots of ways of praying the mysteries, and there are lots of sets of mysteries out there. There are some on this website to get you started, but essentially what we are doing is reading scripture together, remembering Christ's life, and trying to meditate on what that means in our life today. That's the first decade. The second decade is exactly the same. Our Father, ten Hail Marys, and a glory be, a bead on its own for the mystery. Only one Our Father and ten Hail Marys. How come? How come, how come one Our Father and ten Hail Marys? What's up with that? Mystery, an Our Father, ten Hail Marys, a glory be, bead on its own for the mystery, our Father, ten Hail Marys, a glory be, a bead on its own for the mystery, and our Father, ten Hail Marys, a glory be, and then we come to the end. 
There are five decades in all, and most sets of rosaries have five mysteries to pray. So let's try stepping through just a decade and see how we get on. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of... Why would Mary want you to recite this? You know what the Bible says about this? It talks about vain repetitions. But when you pray... Use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye. So what is he saying? This is a pattern to pray after. He's not telling you to, to, to chant the same things over and over again. To parrot the same things over and over again. At all. Of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our. How can Mary pray for sinners when she's in heaven and she has nothing to do with praying for everybody else? Where in the Bible do you see, where in the Bible do you see that Mary is supposed to pray for us? Our death. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at The Bible doesn't call Mary the Mother of God. It never calls her the Mother of God. At the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for... So they are praying to... Mary. The rosary is praying to Mary. That's what that is. She, they are literally teaching. See, I never, you gotta understand something. I never came from Roman Catholicism. I mean, I was baptized as an infant. But then my parents left the Roman Catholic Church right away. For us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, blessed wow, art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit. Wow, they just keep doing the same thing over and over again. The same thing over and over again. Blessed art thou among women, and the hour of our death. That would give me a headache. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. He just looks possessed to me. World without end. Amen. And that is very simply a decade of the rosary. And you say that and repeat that five times around the rosary, interspersing it with the mysteries. So let's look at how you start and you end the rosary. You start with the crucifix. You start by holding the cross and saying, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the... 
sits on its own, just above the cross. Mary's, pray the glory be, and then you finish when you come to the final decade with the final glory be, and then you say two prayers. Hail. The final glory be. Hail, Holy Queen, and we say thank you to Mary for interceding on our behalf. And you'll find both of those final prayers, the creed and the whole structure of how to pray the rosary in the resources section of this website. Okay, so that's what this guy is telling you to do, and he says there's power in that. It just really creeps me out, is all it does. Like, it doesn't do anything. In fact, if you go to my sermon, Rome is the Mom of Islam, I talk about Islam. Uh, I believe that... Um, let's see. Look at this. Prayer beads are used by various religious traditions. Hinduism, Buddhism, that's Roman Catholicism, by the way, not Christianity. Islam, Sikhism, and Baha faith. Uh, to mark the repetition of prayers, chants of devotions, such as rosaries of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and remembrance of God in Islam and Jop and, hu and humanism. Okay, so uh, let's see where they have Islam. In Islam, prayer beads are referred to as the Miz, Mizbaha ta, Tasbe or Siba and contain 99 normal size beads. How about that? 33, 33, 33. Corresponding to the names of God in Islam and two smaller or mini beads separating every 33 beads. Sometimes only 33 beads are used. Hmm. In which case, one would cycle through the three, them three times. The beads are traditionally used to keep count while saying the prayer. The prayer is considered a form of dickery that involves the repetitive utterances of short sentences and the praise and glorification of Allah and Islam. The prayer is recited as followed 33 times. Glory be to God. 33 times. Praise be to God. 33 times. God is the greatest. Don't you find that weird? The glory bees? They got to say their glory bees. They're doing the same thing, aren't they? So all these religions have it. All right, class. I know, you, Michael, you didn't know that. That's why you got to tune in to Rome is the mom of Islam. Because I talked about it in that video all the way back then. And if you subscribe for $19.99 a month, you can... I'm just kidding. There's no charge for it. It's right there. You can find all of those on your local sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley website. Or you can go to YouTube and find it there. Let's see. I wanted to find something for you that I... Hmm, I forgot it now. I lost my train of thought. Anyway, oh, I know what I was going to ask you. I had a question for you. Here's what I want to ask you. Hold on a second. Hang on. Writing's not that. Not that. That's not what I want to ask you. But I got a question for you. Here's my question. My question is as follows. Why do all of those religions have that? The same thing.
you got it, kids. The same mama. They all come from mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of all harlots. The divine feminine of Babylon. That's right, that spirit of the great whore. They all have the same spirit. Satan doesn't care which flavor you like. He just wants you to have anything but Christ. He doesn't care which one you like. You can be chubbykins. I'm just kidding. That wasn't very nice. I shouldn't have said that about him. You could be Roman Catholic. You can be... Islamic. You could be Sikhism. Sick. While reciting the verses from the Guru Granthe Sahib. And upon her forehead was written was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots, and Abominations of the Earth. And I saw a woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said to me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I can tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast, and of the beast that carrieth her, which at the seven heads of ten. They all have the same spiritual DNA, that's why. They're all antichrist. They all have the same spiritual DNA. They're all following the same spirit. There's a spirit. Babylon, the great. They all have the same mother. They all have the same mother. They have the same spirit. Let's see. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall utterly be burned with fire. Uh, let's see. Let's back up. That's not the verse I was looking for. I believe it is Revelation. It's that spirit of Jezebel. Boom, boom, boom. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, to eat things strangle, eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. It's the Spirit. There's the spirit of the Antichrist. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. 
And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us, hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So he's telling you back to this this guy, not that guy, this guy. He's telling you that you ought to He's telling you basically that you ought to use the prayer beads. Day. Our blessed mother does not abandon us, especially when we turn to her through the rosary. Also, to consecrate ourselves to the to Jesus through Mary. By Look, he's like oh, to consecrate us to Mary. Oh, I mean, especially when we turn to her through the rosary. Also, to consecrate ourselves to the to Jesus through Mary by uh, wearing the brown scapular, enrolling in the brown in the brown scapular. The brown scapular. Here's the brown scapular. So what he's telling you is to put this thing on. This is the brown scapular. The scapular of the Lord, uh, the Lady of Mount Carmel, as also known as the brown scapular, is the habit of both the Carmelite order and the discalced Carmelite order, both of which have Our Lady of Mount Carmel as their patroness. In a small town, is widely popular within the Latin Rite and Catholic Church as a religious article, in a small form, excuse me, as a religious article and has probably served as a prototype of all other devotional scap scapular, scapulars. The lit liturgical feast day of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, July 16th, is properly associated popularly associated with the devotion of the scapular. According to the Vatican's Congregation of Divine Worship, the brown scapular is an external sign of the filial relationship established between the Virgin Mary, Mother, and Queen of Mount Carmel, and the faithful who entrust themselves to, totally to her protection, who have recourse to her maternal intercession, who are mindful of the primacy of the spiritual life and the need to pray. In other words... It's a talisman. That's what it is. It's like one of these. Talisman is an object that someone believes holds magical properties that provide particular power, energy, and specific benefits to the possessor. According to the Organization of Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a talisman is defined as a magical figure charged with the force which is which is it is intended to represent. Traditional magic schools advise that a talisman should be created by the person who plans to use it. It is also said that the person who makes the talisman must be well-versed in the symbolism of elemental and planetary forces. Medieval talismans featured ge ge geomantic signs and symbols in relation to planet symbols, which are frequently used in geomantic divination and al alchemy. Symbolo symbology patterns and Kabbalistic figures can be integrated into the creation of the talisman in addition to those chosen planetary or elementary symbolism. It's just witchcraft. That's what it is. See? That's what it is. He's saying if you use that, it's 
If you use that, you're going to be okay. Its origin of practical garment, a scapular was a type of work apron frequently used by monks. The origins of the scapular devotion are to be found in the desires of lay people during the Middle Ages to be closely associated with the Carmelite order and its spirituality. It was customary for lay people who belonged to co-fraternities, sodalites, I don't know what that is, or third orders affiliated with the religious order to wear some sign of membership frequently, some part derived from the religious habit, such as a cord or a cloak. According to traditional accounts, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to Cambridge, at Cambridge at St. Simon Stock, who was prior general of the Carmelite order in the middle of the 13th century. The earliest references tradition dating from the late 14th century states that St. Simon was an Englishman, a man of great holiness and devotion, who always said in his prayers, asked the Virgin to favor his order with some singular privilege. The Virgin appeared to him holding his scap. Let's, let's be honest here. Mary is not the Virgin any longer. She had children afterwards, and she wasn't a virgin anymore. Uh, miraculous medals. Uh, so many different ways. Devotions to Mary. So many different beautiful devotions. Having blessed statues of Our Lady. Devotions to Mary. Having statues of Mary. Notwithstanding no devoted thing that a man shall devote unto the Lord. There's that. supposed to be devoted to the Lord, right? Not to Mary. Our devotion, our praise. You know, around us, in our homes. Does this, does this act as good luck charm type of thing? No, not at all. They're outward expressions of an interior devotion to Jesus through our Blessed Mother. To Jesus through the Blessed Mother. Is that what God says in his word? We don't see that anywhere in the New Testament. We don't see that anywhere in God's word that that's the way that it's supposed to be. Think of scripture. First recorded miracle of Jesus in scripture is what? The wedding feast of Cana. What happens there? Mary initiates it. They're out of wine. She turns to her son. Son, they're out of wine. What does he say? Woman, it's not yet my time. We don't hear any other words from Our Lady. We don't hear any other words from, from Our Lady. Who calls Mary Our Lady? Who runs around calling Mary Our Lady? She isn't your lady. She has nothing to do with your spiritual life at all. And if you're praying to her, you're praying to devils. That's what you're doing, plain and simple. From Mary to Jesus even. What we see is, is this turning to the servants and her words to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Same thing she says to us. Her role is to bring us to her son. To Nowhere does it say in the Bible that Mary is, is directed at any evangelism, was directed at anything to have to do with salvation. Nowhere does it say that anywhere. But they don't use the Bible as their only rule of faith and practice. Point to her son. Now, in all the Marian apparitions, and check the links below and the cards up here, you're going to see links to different Marian apparitions that I've talked about on different, uh, different videos in the past on my YouTube channel. We've addressed regularly how heaven has made perfectly clear to us the role of Mary in our lives. Because Where, When did heaven make that perfectly clear? When did heaven make it perfectly clear that Mary had a role in our spiritual life? There's nothing in the scriptures that indicate that. Nothing at all. Nothing indicates that Mary had any personal 
position in our spiritual life. All of these apparitions, and I speak only of church-approved apparitions, all of these apparitions, where Mary comes to the world, we have to remember, she does not do this of her own power. She does this because her son is sending her. Sending her to say... It's so really weird how they talk about it. It's like they, ha they literally have the spirit of Jezebel. They literally have the spirit of Jezebel, that, that sacred feminine or that, that divine. They literally have that spirit over them. It's, it's like, here's a guy talking about Mary like he's God. That's what he's doing. Literally. Queen of heaven, five times, that number of deaths, right? The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing, whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done, we as our, and our fathers, our kings, and our princes. This is them. This is what they're doing. Same spirit. No difference. What? To say, pray the rosary. Repent. Make acts of reparation. Fast. Pray. Turn your lives around. Stop with the stuff that's sinful. All right? We have to turn away from the sin. We have to turn to the virtue. Our Lady will intervene, intercede in our lives every moment of every day if we call upon her and give her permission to do so. But Whoa! So you call upon her and give her permission to do so. Let's he used an interesting word. Intercede, right? Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. And he saw there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness sustained him. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up or cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me for them, right? It's a prophet. But if they be prophets, if the word of the Lord be with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts. Look at what the position of the Holy Ghost is. Have you ever noticed how Mary takes the place of God the Father? Mary takes the place of God the Son? Mary takes the place of God, the Holy Ghost. Look. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. It is the Spirit that does that. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. This is the Holy Ghost ministry. This is how he intercedes on our behalf. They attribute that to Mary. That's what they're doing. Who is he that condemns that is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right end of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Pray, you gotta pray to Mary. You gotta ask Mary, and you gotta you gotta give her permission to help you. No, you know what you're doing? Listen to me. This is what happens. When you do this, when you conduct yourself this way. What you, are, what you are doing is inviting devils in. 
you are inviting devils in by praying to Mary like that. You are inviting devils to come into your life and you're giving them permission. You are literally giving devils permission to come into your life. You're giving them that legal grounds for them to come into your life. That's what's happening there. It's not a game. It's very serious. Because when you don't do things the way that God has commanded them to be done, and you don't worship God in spirit and in truth, and you look for another intercessor, Mary is in heaven and she can hear nothing of that. But I'll tell you what's going to hear it is a devil and a spirit is going to hear it. And you are practicing prayers to the dead. You are practicing necromancy you are communicating with spirits beyond and what you are doing is is bringing devils into your life and that's the truth that's what's happening and this guy is doing a wholesale video is what he's doing He's doing a wholesale video on how to be possessed. That's what he's doing. He is teaching you how to be possessed by devils. It's not a game. It's serious. All of these guys are. It's what they're doing. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not that the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Look at this one. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession. Who is he? Jesus, the high priest, after the order of Melchizedek. That's who it is. It is Jesus who intercedes. It is the Holy Ghost that intercedes. It is not Mary that intercedes. The Mary they are praying to is the Queen of Heaven. And if you want spiritual apparitions enough, if you want it enough, you're going to get it. You'll get it. Remember that part about permission I just mentioned? We have to cooperate with this. We have to cooperate with what she wants to do in our lives to bring us to her son. We have what she wants to do in our lives. Where does the Bible say that Mary wants to do anything in my life? That Mary wants to do something in my life. No, Jesus wants to do something in my life. The Holy Ghost, God the Father, wants to do something in my life. Mary doesn't know anything about my life. We have to cooperate with the grace of God working through Mary. Get, again, he's pushing this legal cooperation. Do you understand that? Why? Because you're handing over ground to Satan. That's why. You're actually giving Satan place by this. It's very serious. Mary, she's the dispenser of all graces. Heaven has... Whoa! He said she is the dispenser of all graces. No. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. 
all graces or gifts? I'll show you where they come from. But all these worketh that one selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. What's that talking about? The gifts of the Spirit. That these graces of the Spirit, they all come from the Holy Ghost. They all come from the Holy Ghost. He divides severally as he wills. Not Mary. See how they're using Mary to take the place of God? In every office, they put Mary instead of, instead of God the Father, God the Son, or God the Holy Ghost. It's very wicked. It's blasphemy. ...has made this clear. Grace himself, incarnate, came to the world through her womb. The demons fear her. They despise... Okay, so this is a trick right here to make you think that the demons fear Mary. But I guess if I was going to talk about spiritual warfare, if I was going to talk about warfare, I would go to the one chapter of the Bible that describes the Christian's warfare to a T. And let's see if Mary is spoken of when I'm to fight, let's see if the, what do we call it again? The, the rosary and what was the other thing called? I forgot what that other thing was called. I don't know. They're, they're talisman. Whatever they call it. The Catholic talisman. Um, but look at this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shot the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking this shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication of the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Nothing to do with Mary. We have no instance of demons falling down before Mary, being like, oh no. Let's see. But when the devil saw him, they didn't like it, right? He cast out the spirits with his word and he healed all that were sick. Hast thou come... Matthew 8, 29. This is the ones that the spirits fell down and trembled at him, right? He saith unto them, uh, let's see, wrong one. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? See, they fell down before him. That's what they did. Why is that? Because he's God. That's why. Look at this one. Mark Mark 3.11. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God.
They fell down before him. There's nothing in the Bible that says devils fell down before Mary. Despise her when she steps onto the scene in any spiritual battle. The demons know who she is. She is the woman from Genesis 3.15 to crush the head of the serpent. Oh, okay, so he just said that the that she is the woman that will crush the head of the serpent. That's not what the Bible says. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Sorrow shalt thou bring forth. Children thy desire shall be to thy husband. He shall rule over thee. Let's see. Let me back up here. Sorry. Oh. 15. Sorry. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. Her seed is a man. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The woman's seed, a seed comes from a man, not a woman, but the woman's seed is Christ. So he just perverted the gospel, and he just said that it was the woman's seed, or it was the woman. She is the woman that will defeat him. No, that's not what it said. It is Christ that will defeat them. Satan. She's the same woman in Revelation 12, the woman clothed with the sun and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She is not the woman clothed with the sun. She's the woman at the wedding feast of Cana. She's the woman from the cross when Jesus says, Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. None of that has anything to do. None of that has anything to do with Mary as a position of spiritual authority that we pray to to receive power from her or, or to, for, her to, for her to help us fight the devils. None of that. None of that. This woman, again, as, as Father Ripperker tells us, has perfect coercive power over the demons because our Lord gives this to her. St. Maximilian Colby says that there has never been an individual on earth or ever will be on earth, a human being, who has ever been given the power to crush the head of Satan except for our Blessed Mother. Wow. So some saint said it. Does the Bible say it? Does it agree with the scriptures? Is there anywhere in the scriptures that says that Mary's going to crush the head? No. It says the woman's seed. It doesn't say the woman. So I implore you. I, I, I cannot tell you enough. If I had one message to give you before I were to die, I would say this. Turn to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Turn to that... Turn to the to Mary, not turn to Jesus. Turn to Mary. See that? You got to turn to Mary. Beautiful, immaculate heart of Mary. Turn to her with love and devotion because she will protect. She will help guide. She will bring you. To she will protect you. She will guide you. She will direct you. Uh-oh. Let's see. Let's look at that word. Now, here is another blasphemous thing. See how Mary is being used to take the place of the Holy Ghost. Look at this. How be it when he, 
the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine. Mary does not receive of his. The Holy Ghost was to receive of Jesus's. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. See the difference? Sounds like, sounds like it, doesn't it? Sounds like uh, the Holy Ghost and Jesus and the Father getting uh, uh, demoted and Mary is sitting on high. To her son. For those out there struggling with Mary as, uh, as a point of faith, sometimes it's Catholics, non-Catholics struggle with Mary. She becomes kind of a stumbling block for many. Many reasons why that may be the case, but I can say, in my opinion, one major reason is because the demons do not want us to embrace her and accept her. Okay, so this is Satan's way. See, this is that reverse psychology type. This is this is Satan's way. This is Satan's way of deception. Oh, look. You got to have Mary. So Satan doesn't want you to have Mary, so you need to embrace Mary. Where where does the Bible tell us to embrace her? Nowhere. It doesn't tell us that. No. The devil wants you not to trust in your father in heaven. He wants you to doubt the Lord's gracious hand in your life. He wants you to doubt what God is doing in your life. He wants you to doubt the grace of God in your life. He wants to doubt the presence of the Holy Ghost in your life. He wants you to doubt God's word. He could care less if you if you invite Mary into your life. And really make a home for her in our hearts and in our lives. So you're supposed to make a home in your heart and in your life for Mary. That's what he's saying. I thought the Bible says that in all things, Christ should have the preeminence. In all things, Christ. Wherefore, I, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I live now in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It is Christ. That is that the preeminence. Right? They don't want this. Why? Because she crushes their head. She has perfect coercive power over the demons. Christ has given this to her. It is the power of God working through her. So please, I beg you, don't forget how powerful her role is in our life and in this world. Turn so how powerful the life of Mary is in your in your life, her role, her spiritual role. No, what he's trying to get you to do is look at a harlot. And it's not the Mary of the scriptures. He's trying to focus your attention on the queen of heaven. Yeah, Isis, horror. yeah, Isis, that's right. He's trying to change your focus. Satan is using this man to try to deceive people. Why? Because people start wondering about this whole Catholic worship of Mary thing. So because of that, they start to wonder about that. And they don't, and because people start to wonder about that, they got to do things like this, Satan does, to pull them back in to that Mary worship. To pull them back into to trusting Mary.
I remember that guy. I'm going to teach you the gay gospel. I remember that guy. That's one of the trolls that doesn't like me. But I wonder why Roman Catholicism bothers them. That they would look into my past on videos that I've talked about. Why are these? Why would a troll use that one? I'm just curious, troll. Why would you use that one? Why would? Why would? Why would this video bother you? Wonder if it's that crazy dude from down south. Wonder if it's that guy. I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't matter much, really. Always somebody. Right? Always somebody. wonder why it's this one, though. It's kind of weird. Hmm. Very strange. Very strange. Yeah, but why? No, why that one? No, obviously, I mean, you can't tell your whole identity, like, who you really are and why you would do that. I mean, just, like, why do you do that? I'm just curious. Is it the devils that lead you to come onto this threat? Well, of course it is. I don't know why I asked that question. It's devils that lead you to come over here and do that. But I'm just curious as to why why you have to keep yourself in the shadows and why you can't just say who you are. It's just, it's weird. I just wish you'd just say who you were. I mean, I would say be a man, but obviously you don't know what that is. So... You can't do that, but I understand. I get it. I get it. Anyway. Turn to her constantly. Check out these other videos of the other Marian apparitions where she constantly comes to the world warning us as a loving mother does, warning us of the times that we're in and the need for us to take the steps necessary to change our lives and get our act together. So the Bible isn't your warning. It's apparitions of Mary that are your warning. It's apparitions of Mary. So visible manifestations of some person that calls themselves Mary, some devil, excuse me, not person, some devil that calls themselves Mary appears to them appears to them and tells them that they that they they need to be good they need to behave themselves right and remember she says the number one weapon spiritual devotional weapon is the rosary make that rosary part of your everyday life Make an extension of who you are. So not make the Bible a part of your everyday life? What does the, what does the Bible say? God's word say? Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sit against thee. It says, it says, the word of God. is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing and dividing asunder of soul and spirit of the joints of the morrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's what does it. It's the word of God that we're supposed to use. The day's going to come when we're going to die. For those of us who are Catholic, we know when it comes to a Catholic funeral, uh, most of the time the body is laid out there in the casket for the viewing. If we're fortunate enough and blessed enough to be able to have a, a viewing of the body and our loved ones come up. And what do we see a lot of times? We see that rosary is wrapped around the hands of the individual as we're, as we're lying there in that casket. You know what I never wanted? I never wanted my kids to come up, you know, God willing, it would go this way and see their father lying there. And they would see this rosary wrapped around his hands. And they would look down and they would say, there's my dad. Look at him there. What's that? What's that thing wrapped around his hands? He never 
He never did. He never. He never prayed. What? What is this? Never wanted that. Man, I don't want that. I don't want nobody thinking I didn't pray to some chick with some beads in my hand. That I didn't pray to some devil with beads in my hand. I didn't want nobody thinking that. I didn't want my children thinking that I didn't pray to some woman with beads in my hand. Really? Because I would think that you would want people to know that you read God's word. And you believed God's word and you followed God's word and you lived God's word by the grace of his spirit and you walked with Christ. That's what I would think. I would think you would want that. But this guy says he wants his kids to know him as the guy that prayed the rosary. What I want is my kids to see, again, God willing, the day comes where they're able to view my body lying in a casket. I want them to see that rosary and say, that's what my dad was about. He was about That's what my dad was about. My dad was about a rosary. That is so sad how absolutely deluded that is. It's so sad how absolutely deluded this man is and deceived by the devil. How, how he, he wants people to know him for the rosary and not Jesus Christ. About turning to Jesus through Mary. He was about making sure that that rosary was an extension of his life. It is a devotion to Jesus through Mary, to know the Holy Family, to love our Blessed Mother, to love St. Joseph. To love our Blessed Mother, to love St. Joseph. Why? Why Why am I, why? Where, where does it say that at all anywhere? The Bible gives us the proper context of worship, and it is worship to God. God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's what Jesus said. If you're going to worship God, it's got to be in spirit and in truth. You can't, you can't have any mediators that are not part of the scriptures. And there's only one mediator. There's one advocate. Let's see, they say something about now and in the hour of our death, right? That they're looking for Mary to mediate for them now and in the hour of their death. Make that rosary an extension of who you are. It'll help, it'll help the legacy of those who follow you to know that going to Mary is critical and essential in the spiritual fight. What? That going to Mary is critical and essential in strong spiritual warfare. No. Going to Jesus Christ. She has, thanks be to God, perfect course of power over the demons. Call on that. Call on that power of Our Lady. So call on the power of the Lady, not the power of God. You know, I'm memorizing Psalm 4 right now. And David, he says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you... Love vanity and seek after leasing, Selah. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him.
God hears. We're to pray to him. Praying through any other being besides Jesus Christ is antichrist. And you're calling upon devils and not the God of the Bible. And then cooperate. Cooperate with the grace of God. That's all I got for now. Share this video. Thanks to all my patrons, those who have supported me and continue to support me with this work. If you are interested in becoming a patron, check the link below. But for all of you who do support and all the great supporters we've had over the years with this ministry, I pray for you by name. I mean that. God bless. Wow. Unbelievable. Anyway, so here's this guy right here, Doug Barry. This is the man that is teaching all of this. Oops, sorry. False doctrine, husband, father, Catholic speaker. And you look at these videos. And he's got a lot of views on these videos. Got a lot of them. But he's teaching heresy. He's teaching necromancy. He's teaching communication with the dead. That's what he's teaching. Anyway, well, we could go into Mary as the co-redemptrix and everything like that, but really, I think you get the point. Everything that man said was completely against the scriptures. Not a one thing that he said was biblical, and he couldn't even appeal to the Bible because there isn't any verses in there that talk about those things of what he was promoting. He basically replaces God. He replaces God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. He replaces all of them with Mary. That's who he replaces them with. It's very, very dangerous. Very wicked. So anyway, yeah, you can get started on, the, on all those other things. Those, um, the change of the, the statues or the veneration of the statues, the changing of the Ten Commandments. All those things. Those are all Roman Catholic things that the papacy has done. And it's it's legitimate uh, that Rome is that great antichrist beast organization. So it's sad, but that's exactly what they are. So anyway, uh, a good warning for people out there not to get involved with... with uh, praying uh, to Mary and praying to others, uh, other spirits like that out there. Hope you all have a good afternoon and evening here tonight, and then we'll see you back here probably Wednesday. I'm not sure what I'll be talking about Wednesday, but uh, we'll see what happens uh, from now until then. Um, but uh, pray for one another. And pray, yeah, keep praying for Catholics. That's right. They need it. They need to know the gospel. They need to understand the truth of the gospel, Jesus Christ, that they would be saved. Um, and that they're, they're believing a lie. And they're deceived to believe a lie. Anyway, have a good night.